All right. Hey, thanks for joining me. I'm going to teach you how to use your Centro. Now, a few things in here are going to repeat themselves. And I do this on purpose because I really want you to get the hang of how to do this. So I've repeated the same things a few times, especially the part where we're joining two different yarns together and that you really need to practice. So here I am weaving in front of, behind, in front of, behind, in front of, behind. And I begin with the white needle. There's only one white needle on this entire machine. And that's typically where you want to start, unless you've got a really good eye. I don't go by the white needle when I'm joining two different color yarns together. Here, what you see me doing is I'm putting it through the, um, the guide. Okay, so that's on top of the machine. That's your guide. And what you're looking at there with the three holes is your tension. All right, and you wanna make sure you're unraveling a lot of your skein of yarn because if there's too much tension, you're going to start dropping stitches and you're going to have holes and truly once you get a hole in this you got to rip it all out so uh, slow and steady definitely wins the race so here i am i'm going once you do cast on and you start spinning go slow for the first like three to five go rounds you'll see my speed is picking up here I may even have sped up the, the video. I'm not sure. I can't remember. <laughs> All right. So I'm cutting my yarn because I want to join another contrasting color. Okay. Now, again, when you're doing this, do it slow. What I'm doing here with the two contrasting yarns is I am tying a square knot. Okay. There it is. I will take it out of the tension, gu the tension guide and out of that guide. Now you'll see I'm going really slow in front of the needles. Then I take that knot and I make sure I place it between the needles where it's not too tight. And then it goes back into the guide and back into the tension and off you go. But it's imperative that you go really, really slow when you're joining two different color yarns. Now here you're going to see a close up. And again, I repeat these over and over because I can tell you from experience, I have had to rip my work out multiple times and start over because I didn't do it right. So I'm really trying to emphasize, go slow with this do it right. It'll save you a lot of heartache. <laughs> There's my square knot. I don't know why it's taking me so long, but anyways, now I pull it out of the guide, the yarn guide, and watch closely. See how I'm making sure that that yarn now what goes in front of the needles and under that needle point. Otherwise, see, when you go behind it, and it happens if you go too fast or you're not paying attention, you're going to have a hole and you're going to have to rip it out. Again, watching the tension here where the two yarns join together. Now I'll put that back into the guide and back into the tension rod and off I'll go. And as you see, when I join yarns, I don't do them all in the same place, like at the white needle. I do them wherever. Now let's see what I'm doing here. Oh, I'm casting on again, just in case you haven't, haven't, I don't know, figured it out or you need it need to see it again now you're going to see it again in front of behind in front of behind in front of behind I do not use a waste yarn I used to because that's how I was taught and it makes a lot more work when you're making knitted caps you don't have to use 
you know, 10 rows or five rows of a waste yarn. You don't. In fact, I'll show you at the end how to finish this hat. And it's really easy. This is a fun machine. You know, it doesn't cost a lot of money for sure. And you get what you pay for. It's not an Addy. The Addies are wonderful. But you know what? If you're just cutting your teeth and you want to see if you really, really enjoy making these machine-made hats, buy the, buy the $50, $60 Centro 48 needle machine. You'll love it. It's fun. I've had to replace mine a couple times because, again, they're not the expensive Addies. So they do break. And even the Addies break at some point. Pardon me, I am sipping my coffee. It's nine o'clock in the morning. I have horses. I have a farm. So I've already been out putting up fencing and fence posts. There we go again. There's the knot. Joining the two colors together. You'll see these are actually two different videos that I filmed so that I could give you different perspectives. And again, show you over and over again how to join these two yarns together. Because I'm really trying to keep you... From having to endure the heartache that I and the frustration that I've had to uh, experience trying to figure this out. But I, gosh darn it, I wanted to have striped hats. So I was going to figure it out. Now it's easy. It becomes second nature. You know exactly what you need to do. And there you have it. Oh, I love my hand gesture. It's like, ta-da. It's fun. So much fun. I have made probably 60 hats in the past few months. What I'm showing this picture on the right, those are chip clips. I use those as weights. And you do want to have them. They keep your your the tension perfect and even. These are a great weighted chip uh, clip. I got them four to a package off of Amazon for like, I don't know, 10 bucks. And um, I really like the weight of them. They work super, super well. Okay, I think I'm going to join two colors again. There's that knot. So I'm like, oh, no, if I let it go to the other side, like to the right of that needle, it's going to be too tight. So you really want to make sure you're placing that knot where the two yarns join together in the proper place so your tension stays the same. If it's too tight, you're going to make a mess. You're going to start dropping stitches. Oh, my dog, Dami, just made a guest appearance. So I have two of these knitting machines. I keep one, as you'll see right here. One's in the in the dining room so that if I'm having coffee with my hubby in the morning, I'm actually knitting drives me crazy. Um, and then I keep one at my desk because I'm a student, too. Not only do I own a few businesses, but I'm a student in the equine gestalt coaching program. So when I'm doing, you know, have to watch tutorials or attend class on Zoom, I'm actually knitting because I'm making all the graduate gifts. They're all getting gift gifts of, of um, my my hats. And I had logos made. You can go to Etsy and get little faux leather logos made. You can have your name on them or your farm name or whatever. Um, so you can really personalize them. This is just truly a lot of fun, folks. Enjoy. Once you get these little nuances down and they're second nature and, and you, you know how to avoid the pitfalls, you're really going to enjoy this. Here it is again. Oh, now I'm casting off. So this is the needle that I got with the Centro machine. And you do want to use these needles really flexible and you need the needle to be flexible, which is unlike your regular yarn needles that you use to like join pieces together so here we go and i did about a foot and a half of of a tail of yarn that's threaded through that needle so what i'm doing is i'm spinning the crank so the needle goes down and there's a piece of yarn right in front of that needle see it and i'm gonna put my needle underneath that piece of yarn and again underneath and then pull my tail through it and this is going to join all your stitches together so you don't drop any all right so once again you're going to see me thread this needle and again 
use the needle that you get with this machine. It's a, it's a great needle. It seems really flimsy, but actually it works better because it's flimsy. So I crank the handle forward just a couple clicks so that maybe two of the needles are down. Don't try to do a bunch at once because you'll end up having all your stitches pop. And then you're totally in danger of having some drop stitches and you kind of don't want that. Go slow. Just go slow. It's worth it until you get the hang of it. At some point here, I am going to speed up the video so you can see this going quickly. It truly is a fun way to make gifts, Christmas gifts. Oh my gosh. And again, go to Etsy and get, I go to TaylorMade, T-A-Y-L-O-R-M-A-D-E, TaylorMade on Etsy. Tammy, she, she makes me all of my leather tags that I sew into all my caps and they're gorgeous. I have logos because I have different, um, different affiliations. I, I am the host of the Backyard Horse Enthusiast. I also am the founder of Hope for Humans and Horses. And I also am making the graduation gifts for my fellow uh, uh, st student classmates <laughs> that are graduating. So I have the logo for Touched by a Horse as well. And, and Tammy from TaylorMade makes beautiful logos. She's so good. And they're not expensive. So here you go. Look at that. Now I'm just, I'm cinching it. And then I'm sewing the top, like just, just cinching it up like that. Look at that. And there's a hat. So I'm going to show you how I did that. That was a finished one. I'm going to cinch that end. And again, I didn't use waste yarn. So that end is right there, ready to be cinched up. There it is. And then I'm going to turn this inside of itself and put the two points, the two finished pointy ends together. I'm pushing it in there. I stick the needle up through. Watch the needle. It'll, it should come through there. It came through. And then I tie three knots. I like to do three knots to make sure it's going to stay. And then you can attach pom-poms. I've bought furry ones off of Amazon. You can get like 12 or 15 of them for like 15 bucks. They're really cute. They're, they're, they are rabbit though, or they're fake actually. They look like rabbit and they're all different colors. You can get all one color. Then I pushed, pulled it back through to the inside and I'm triple knotting that. Trimming my yarn. And that, there you go, folks. There's a finished hat. There's a little pom-pom I made. I have the pom-pom makers. Use all my excess yarn for that. And there's one of my tags.